like cross choke style submissions. Uh, I tapped to a million times, but that was because I trained with the judo national team, and they would just have like wrists, like I have thighs, and they literally just grabbed and squeezed, and I I, I would tap. Yeah. Uh, so for myself, as you can see, uh, 20 years of jiu-jitsu, I don't have the most manly wrists, so I cannot do that stuff. Uh, I cannot just like power choke, cross choke. So um, I did do that for a long time until I ran into uh, <clears throat> some uh, instructors in, in Estonia who was teaching this in a different way than I'd seen before. And it became kind of my, my go-to choke for myself and for many, many of our competitors. I had a kids team who did literally only this submission. They, I never taught them anything else, just this one submission. Um, and I think the approach that they had worked really well for me and, and I've, I've used that with success. And now I have a lot of data of myself actually being able to choke someone from mount uh, with, a, with a cross choke without having a very impressive grip strength and also being able to teach it to others, even more important, and make them actually pull it off in competition. So um, I'll go through it. It's pretty simple. Um, I, I will use Matt because he loves getting choked from mount. So if you're just in mouth bottom, please, let's turn the head that way. All right. So common problem is I'm in some kind of mount, and you take some kind of grip, and you try to, to squeeze and do this, right? This is great if you're super, super strong. You can probably maybe even pull that off, but never worked for me. Um, so what I need to do instead is I need to, there are two things that makes this work. One is <clears throat> correct position, and the other one, which is the most important part, is patience. All right, the choke is not actually the te technique, the choke is just patience, right? Because I can have the perfect choke attempt from the beginning, but if he has confidence and still has a, a will to, to survive and he has a lot of energy, he's going to get up, right? So the, the strategy for submitting him is actually just having patience, be ready to, to bail on everything you, you are trying and then stay where you are and then try again, right? I submit him by making him... Uh, uh, lose um, his will to to survive, you know? give up, mentally give up. It's more like a mental submission than anything. You know? <clears throat> so what I need to do is that the problem is if I'm in kind of a low mount, even sitting, or if I'm like this, the problem is that my weight is kind of on his hip. You know? So anything I try to do on the upper body will only be based on literally the power of my wrist. I can't really put use gravity into the choke. All right, so that's the first thing that I need to fix, is that I cannot have my hip low and choke. Right? I, I could maybe do like a kind of like a Ezekiel style, style choke because I don't need to put weight into it. But to have a proper strong uh, cross choke, I need to put my weight down into the choke, right? Because I cannot rely on my, on my little wrist, yeah? So, <clears throat> I'm just gonna loosen this a little bit for the audience. So if I sit here, my weight goes here, yeah? But I need my weight to go into his face. So what I need to do is I must go into kind of a high mount position. And what I basically am looking for is that it's like any other thing. Just so I need to get underneath his arms. So if I'm here, I need to move up to this position and pretty much sit on his, on his, on his more like his belly, chest area. When I'm here now, my weight goes into him because the choke is going to come from my weight, not from my, my wrist. So I need to move to kind of this position. And there are many ways of, of getting around that, you know, maybe he doesn't know what he's doing and he's, uh, he's like just posting up and that's my opportunity to move up. Maybe I have to force him more, you know, maybe, maybe I have to kind of, <laughs> I have to kind of do that, you know, move his arms up and move and sit. It depends a lot on like his strategy and all this stuff, but I, w I should find a way to get here, right? And sometimes it's really, really easy, sometimes it's very difficult, but that's kind of the sport aspect. <clears throat> so, as I move up, I'm going to have to keep this position. And it's going to look like this. And I'm not going to spend too much time on how to actually get here. You, you're going to have to a little bit figure that out yourself. Sometimes you have to crank the arms. Sometimes they just do that and it's easy, but you have to get to here, right? Um, so, what I need to do is keep my knees wide. And what's super important is that my feet are kind of sitting on his hips like this. Yeah? Because if my feet are out, he can push me down and push himself up. No, 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 just push me like that. Oh, sorry. See, now I'm back in where I don't want to be. So the way I secure this position is that I kind of almost sit, stand on his hip. So if he's trying to push me down now, he, I'm stuck on his hip. Yeah? 
And my toes must, I'm gonna tell you this now and then you're gonna, you're gonna not do it because I have done this many times, I know. My toes must always go in. Right, they have to be like little monkey feet hooking underneath him like that. Huh? If the toes go out like that, I don't have a lot of control with him. Yeah? And then maybe he's gonna just kind of bench press my hip up, whee, like that, yeah, or even just push me down. So I need my feet to be standing on his, on his hips and then the toes go in. Yeah? I can also, if, if you're comfortable with it, sometimes if he lifts his hip a little bit, I will always search my feet to go even more underneath. Yeah? But I think to begin with, this is good practice, right? So, and you will find that 90% of this technique is the position, right? The finish is actually almost nothing. So, this is the position I want. So let's practice this first. I sit up high, I'm underneath his armpits. My knees are out wide for kind of base. I sit on his hip and my toes go in. I, I should kind of squeeze his butt cheeks with my toes a little bit right now. I should like pinch, pinch his butt like that. And my hands are just out, right? Now, obviously we, we cannot go from here to 100% uh, intensity trying to escape, right? You, you need a progression to practice this position. Because in the beginning, it's, it's a little bit um, uh, unnatural for you to sit and mount like this. Maybe you're used to mount being something like, like this, where you're just completely stuck and it's much more safe. So you have to build up the confidence in a position like this, right? So what he needs to do is to be my coach. Right? So the first thing he's doing, the first uh, kind of progression of the resistance, is that he just needs to simulate that I'm sitting like on a pickup truck on a bumpy road. Right? That's all he has to do. So he's going to give me like a little bumpy ride. And all I practice is just keep my feet in the position, my toes in, use my hands to base. Yeah, that's perfect. Do a little bit more. And I will have people drill this. Yeah, just keep going. Because then you lose the foot and you have to kind of try to get it back. Yeah. Oh, it fell off. I'm going to have to. Oh, that's it. Yes. And he's coaching me. Very good. Yeah. And sometimes if I feel like He's starting to push himself up. Maybe I can put one arm like that. Yeah. So to make sure he doesn't move, I can put one hand here. Yeah, all this stuff just. And don't worry too much about like what ifs, you know? What if he grabs my arm? What if he's bridging fast? All this stuff. We have to start like really low, and all you do on bottom is just this. <laughs> Bumpy road, yeah? You can push a little bit with your hands, and that's it. Okay? That's it. Always the first question. So let's try that first, a few minutes, switch on your own, and uh, then we uh, take the next step. Yeah, let's go. Uh, so that takes a little bit of practice, and it feels a little bit unnatural in the beginning. But I, I have the data that this is possible. For every, I teach this to all levels, yeah? <coughs> so one thing that I just see that's really important is that your toes should always go underneath you. Yeah? If I put my toes like this, like that, maybe there's, there's a fairly decent chance that he can kind of uh, lift his hip and, and bench press me up, and I'm going to fall. Yeah? I, need to be, I need my feet to be glued to him like this. Yeah? So when he, if he's pushing somewhere, I'm stuck. And with all other sports, sometimes it's easy to sit there, sometimes it's difficult, sometimes you have to fight to get there, and sometimes it's impossible, but that's sport. Huh? Sometimes you, he manages to get the elbows back because he's really aware of it, and then you have to fight to get them back up, but that's how it is. Huh? It's like shooting on the right side of the goal. Sometimes you score a goal, sometimes they catch it, sometimes they don't. You know, that's, that's how it is. So, that's the first drill you practice that. Like, um, now, we're going to do the exact same thing, but he can also uh, push me a little bit with his arm. Right? So he can push there, and I really need to use my feet to be, to be stuck. And I just try to put my hands out. I can move my, my chest a little bit. And he should, just, he should just do stupid escapes for now. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's very stupid. He should just do a little bit of stupid escapes. And notice how... Sometimes I feel comfortable putting my feet underneath him, crossing my toes, and my, my goal is just to always sit underneath his arms, right? So, let's try a little bit more, maybe just one minute. The exact same thing, and the person on bottom could do the bumpy road and push a little bit, yeah? 
We have to start with all the most stupid escapes first. I just bench press and do this. Huh? Let's try that first, just for one minute, to make you a little bit comfortable with the position. The most important thing is that you try to sit underneath their arms. That's the key to, to get this choke. I recommend you take some time practicing this. Very, very simple. You don't need me. Have a stopwatch. Go like two minutes top, two minutes bottom. N new part. And you just spend a week, a few weeks, getting really comfortable with that position. And then you'll figure out all the little details of getting the arm back up, like posting your hands so they don't move, lifting the head a little bit, right? I, sh I don't need to go through all of that yourself. You literally just play the game and you figure out the, the basics yourself. Right? Now the next thing is that once I'm in that correct position, so I managed to kind of maybe move up in one way or the other, and I sit here, yeah? Now the next thing is that I'm, I'm gonna tr try the, the first step of the choke, yeah? And the first step is literally just to grab, cross grab the collar, right? I'm not trying to go deep inside of it or nothing, I just take one loose grip on the collar, like that, yeah? So I go from here, like this, I feel very safe, and then one hand goes and takes the collar, like that. Yeah? And now I have one hand to keep my base, and my toes in, and my knees out, right? Really simple. And we're going to do the exact same thing. He's going to go bumpy road. Just nice and bumpy road, yeah. And the most important thing is if at any point I feel like I'm losing the position, I let go. I go back, I take my time, and I take it again. Yeah? Okay, let's go. And even here, he's maybe going a little bit too hard for the drill, but that's it. No worries. And I feel like that. I let go, to stay, and I go again. Yeah? The most important part of making this choke work is that you're willing to let go of everything and start over. Right? So uh, let's try that again. Exactly the same as before, but just with a really loose grip on the collar. Okay? Let's try that. A few minutes. This hand to be that no. Yeah, or, or just be fast with this hand. Yeah. There you go. Said 95% of this choke is literally just drilling the position. Because what's going to make him tap is that he's going to, I'm, I'm going to try to choke him 70 times and then he doesn't want to be there anymore. But the foundation is that I will stay in mount all the time. Every time the choke fails, I'm still there. Yeah? And he's going to have to eat another <coughs> one and another one and another one. So I'm here and also for uh, Jiu Jitsu competition, when in mount, you can stay as long as you want without getting warnings. Yeah? In the old days, you had to pretend like you were attacking, and this is also great for that. Yeah? So now, I'm here, and I practice just the position. Yeah? Now, what I do now is that he's going to do bumpy road, just a little bit. Yeah, bum, ba, -dum, ba -dum. And always, it's like this, he's going to pretend to do something, 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 and he, then he's going to take a break. Yeah? When, you, when you are in a position, a control position, it's never like his intensity of escape attempts is like, 100% forever. It's not like that. It's always like, I'm going to try to escape, try to escape. Okay, that didn't work. I'm going to take a break. Think, think, think. I'm going to try to escape, try to escape, and then take a break. Yeah? And you have to, to know that kind of rhythm of the opponent when they attack and when they rest. Yeah? Um, and that's super important for being efficient in like power struggle. What do you call that? Well, the way I always explained it for my kids' team was to, I don't know if you ever watched the uh, Storm Chasers on Discovery. Anyone? I can I watch all of that? Fell asleep to that. Amazing. Anyway, Storm Chasers, they chase storms, obviously. They have this TIV. Anyone? The Tornado Interception Vehicle. It's an amazing show. Come on, guys. They also died in a tornado one. Anyway, so what they do is they drive around, but then the fucking tornado is coming, engage the TIV, right? They put the the things in the ground, and they sit and wait. And the tornado is, is over them. Like, but they don't move, yeah? As the tornado is passing, they drive again. It's the same thing you have to do in many, many situations. In jiu-jitsu, you are, are imagine you're the storm chasers. When he's going full, like, ape shit to escape, that's your time to, to hold and wait. When he takes a break, that's your time to move, yeah? When he, and then he goes again, I'm gonna try to escape. That's your time to hold and wait, don't fight it. And the moment he takes his break to think and come up with a different solution, that's when you move, right? 
This is super important because if you're just going hard on hard, right, you're going to burn yourself out on top really fast. Yeah? So I'm going to be the tip. Now, I'm here. There is a storm. The storm is him just bumping his hip for knuckle. And I keep my base. Yeah? And he takes a break. When he takes a break, I take this hand and I tighten it. And I go again. He takes a break. <laughs> and I take my time. Already now, he can feel the frustration of this. <laughs> There's no choke yet. We're far from the choke. Yeah? So what I do is I just tighten it with the other hand, give it a little jerk. I never try to get the perfect grip the first time. Impossible. It might take six, seven, eight, nine, ten attempts before it's really, really tight. And what I'm aiming for is that my thumb goes under the neck, his neck is here, and what I can do a little bit is I kind of pull it like a little curl and put some pressure on, on the chest with my, with my, uh, with my uh, elbow. Yeah, like that. So, you go. I use my hand, it takes a break. And at some point, it's gonna be so tight that I can move on. But again, the most important thing here, at any point, if he has a lot of energy or confidence, he might do some kind of big escape, push or roll or whatever. I let go, I stay, and I'm back. He takes another break. Yeah, I tighten it, and I might have, oh, God damn, this grip is so good right now. But even now, if I have to, I let go. Yeah? I cannot be too eager to choke him, then I'm gonna lose him. Yeah? So I build it up, build it up, build it up, but at any time, fine, I start over. But I stay in mount every single time, yeah? Okay. So try that, get the grip, and follow that rhythm of the opponent. As he's escaping, 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 you hold and wait. <sighs> Takes a break, tighten the grip. Yeah? Escape, 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 escape. Take a break, tighten the grip. Just tighten, 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 all the time, yeah? Okay. Try a few times and switch on your own. So this would be another, like, you can easily spend a few classes of just doing drills like that. I would do that for my kids' class. We'll just do these drills, two minutes on top, two minutes on bottom, switch partner, do that for 45 minutes. Kind of boring in a sense, but it's a skill that you need for, like, any other sport. So, so that's what I'm going to do. And the most important here, as I said, and I'm going to say it again, is patience. I, I'm going to wear him out. That's, that's, that's where the choke works. So first I'm just here, yeah? Then, and, and whatever I need to kind of stay here, and I look for his rhythm of escaping and relaxing, escaping and relaxing. When he's relaxing, I, I go, yeah? And I, take, I wait, I wait, I wait, I wait, and he takes a break, tight, yeah? And you, there are many details here that I could talk about for hours and hours, but you kind of figure it out yourself if you just practice this, right? Eh? How to maybe pull that a little bit, put some weight on the chest, and sometimes you use that hand post it on the mat to make sure he doesn't move up too much, all this stuff, but that's like stuff you figure out as you just practice the game, yeah? Now, um, even if I'm here and the, the, where this choke doesn't work is if you want it too much, right? If you really want the choke, it's not gonna work because you get too eager, right? So let's say I, I managed to like get a super tight grip. I'm like, yes, it's here, all right? Very soon I'm gonna choke him, but I f forget something with my feet and he pushes my hip down. Yeah? Now I have to let go of everything and start over. If I keep it and I try to choke now, I'm not going to get it. And he's probably going to escape. Yeah? So, yeah, you don't. And then I start over and I try to get up. Same position. And this. And this. Wait, wait, wait. Tighten. Wait, wait, wait. Tighten. And sometimes you tighten it ten times. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you tighten ten times and he does a big escape. And I let go and I go again. Yeah? That's really the key. The choke is just a small detail in the end. So, um, now, let's try this. So, I take my time to, to, sometimes I have to like shake it to get it in, you know, and I, I want to get to a point where this is so tight that there is like literally no space at all and I have 
some weight on, on, his, uh, on his chest. Yeah? My feet are always in the best position, like toes in. And I, I emphasize that a lot because now when you start to think about choking him, then usually you're so focused on the choke that the toes toe start to do that. And then they escape and you're going to blame me. Yeah? So, toes in, please. Now, for me to try the finish is, um, the key is this. I'm just loosen it back a little bit. The key is this. Unlike trying to do two hands kind of choking, what I do is one hand is not choking, actually, it's just framing. It just builds a structure. And I want the, the bone of my arm to be on the neck. Yeah? So I don't want his neck to be on the flat part, but on the, on the sharp part. Huh? So I'll be here. My position is like this. Yeah? And I take my time to get this nice and tight. Right? Again, and I say the same again and again. If he managed to do like a wild, don't do it, but if he managed to do like some wild motion and I have to let go, I let go. And I still sit here. Right? Now, <clears throat> one arm is here and it's super tight. The bone of my arm is on the neck, right? So one arm is choking and the other one is cross-facing. That's the key. I'm not trying to choke on both sides because that'll be my, the power of my wrist, yeah? So what I do is this. You might have to come over here, guys. So see it? The motion is here. The problem here is he knows that there is a choke coming. Yeah, so he's often gonna, gonna hide this side. Yeah, he's gonna not let me, there's no chance I'm getting in there. Right? And I maybe saw like 50 instructionals on how to do this and I never managed to do it. Like, so just go on the inside or grab with your thumb or something. I never made it work. So he's hiding that side like crazy. Yeah, he don't want me to take that. Don't worry about putting the hands there and stuff yet. So what I do is that this one is choking and the other one gonna have to cross face him this way. Yeah? So my hand goes not here because he's very aware of that. My hand goes in a circle, big circle. And now, the, did you shave today? No. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Your butt. So this one goes around and I take the, the pointy tip of my elbow on the, on the cheek where the teeth are, right? That's it. Because I just want to turn his head that way. So look, I'm gonna do this. Sorry, Matt. Pointy tip, and look what's happening. I'm gonna slide it over ah. the face. <laughs> Until this comes here, attach underneath. Right? You have to, to grab some, you have to grab the back. Not, don't grab the gi because it's moving. It's just a hook like this that goes on the back, right? So again, hide it all you can. There's no access, but look at this. Like that, and then I connect. Yeah? So look, my right arm is on the neck, and the other one is across the teeth. That's the point. Yeah? If you shave today, I'm sorry. Like that, and it can also kind of curl the the ear a little bit, and I attach. Right, like this. This is the key. And now the finish. Notice how I spent no energy on my wrist. All I do is I put my forehead on the mat, and I turn my head. It's a, Counterclockwise. That's it. So my, my, my back and my weight is doing the choke. Right? There is no like pulling or squeezing or doing all this. Sorry, dude. <laughs> so I take my time. I go in a circle. You can hide it. I go in a circle, point the elbow, cross face, all the way in. Yeah? I go so this part touches his neck. Yeah? Like that. I often see people start doing this and then you can't attack. You have to attach the hand behind. Like that, attach, head on the mat, that's it. And that's super strong. And very often already, the moment I'm like here, people start to tap, it's like not very nice. Sorry. <laughs> and look at my feet. Yes. Right? So let's just try the finish first and then we put it back in that drill where he has to move and you relax and attack and let go and go back and build it up, build it up, build it up and try to go for the finish. Okay, let's try that first, and then we put it in the situation where you actually make it work. Work. Yeah. And also, it it makes you face your head, so you use that. So I'm just gonna do it one more time. So see if there are some details that you missed, right? Because there are a few little things, are very common mistakes. You make the same mistakes as everyone else. You're not uh, exceptionally stupid. You're normal stupid, which is. Good. Sorry. 
So I get this grip, and what really makes this, this choke uh, work really well is that you really take your time to get this grip right. Yeah? Just take all the time in the world to get a proper grip. And I, now I go in a circle, and I aim for his chin, and my forearm is going to slide across until I grab his back, not the gi. If I grab the gi and I start to apply pressure, the fabric is moving. Yeah? So I grab the back, and I go across one on the neck, one on the chin, and here comes the rotation of the, sorry, of the finish. So the finish is your, your weight and your rotation going in. Yeah? So try it just a few more times, and then we're going to put it back in the drill where you actually make it work, okay? Yes? So um, the position of your elbow, of the choking hand, is it rather sideways towards the shoulder? Or is you it just need to get the, the, the bone on the neck. Yeah. yeah so figure it out. <laughs> Much of this is like, you know, if I was going to teach you tennis, like hold the racket like this, and then I just throw you a lot of balls. And you kind of figure it out along the way. I'll adjust a few things. But I could talk about details from now until the end of the week. But I'd like you to just kind of get hands on. Yeah? So try what's working better. Try to turn your hand one way or the other and see if it works or not. Yeah? You don't need me exactly to tell you everything. Important trial and error. Let's try it out. Yes, one question. One arm is on the neck and one arm is on the chin. And one arm is choking and the other arm is just cranking the face to the other side. So the technique itself, the actual choke, is not what's going to get you the submission. All right? Because you can do that perfectly. But if he's fresh and he still has confidence that he can escape and he has energy, he's going to get out, no matter how good your choke is. What's going to, remember what I said, what's going to get you the submission is patience. Right? If you're too eager to submit, he's, you're not going to get it. Right? So it's actually the, the kind of the framework you put the choke in that's going to give you the submission. And I know this because I think the kids team probably won like a thousand matches on just this. Huh? I go to mount, I sit here. Right? If I lose it, I work my way back up. Take my time. Remember, I cannot get warnings here. And even if I'm here, if, if there were warnings, I will not get warnings from just constantly attacking the neck. Huh? Now when I'm here, I find the time to, to grab it. Yeah? And it's always when he's relaxing. So now when we drill it, he must simulate, try to escape, try to escape, relax and think. Try to escape, try to escape, relax and think. And he must simulate that rhythm because I have to learn how, when to move and when to rest. Yeah? So I wait, he moves around, he takes a break. Aha. He moves around, he takes a break. He moves around, he takes a break. He moves around, he takes a break. Yeah? Okay, very nice. At any point, even though I feel like I have the best grip in the world, I'm willing to let go, stay in mount, and just start over. Right? Same thing happens, tighter, 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 and I wait. Yeah? And now we come for the finish attempt, and you're never going to finish it in the first attempt. I, I, I will never do that. Maybe in training, but in competition with adrenaline and like, ah, oh, their mom is watching, you know, they're going to give it the little extra to not tap. Yeah? So the choke, the first many attempts are just to wear him out. Yeah? So he's, he knows, oh, fuck, this is bad. And I'm not getting, and he's thinking, oh, I'm not getting him off. Because obviously Christian spent a lot of time in the gym just practicing this, staying in this position. Uh, he feels that I'm going to stay here for a while. But the least he can do is just protect that, that side of the neck. Yeah? So I cross face. Like that, and maybe nothing's happening, and I go back. Yeah, and he's hiding it, okay? So I cross face and just defend. He's not tapping, okay, I'm here again. I smile, yeah, and then he tries to get out again. Okay, he takes a break. Uh -huh. Sorry, yeah. Smile again, oh. yeah, tighten it again. He takes a break. It's my time to go. Oh, I missed it again. But I'm still here. I smile again. Hello. Yeah. Here we go again. Look at my patience, even though I was, had a 99% choke. <laughs> and sometimes I have the kids literally, they, the first five times they were not even allowed to try to choke, they would just do this. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> oh. Sorry, dude. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and at some point, he's just really tired of being there, and then the actual choke is, is like a piece of cake. Yeah? <laughs> the choke is just a little kind of, uh, little like, the, the topping of the cake, you know? The whole thing is just put him in a torture chamber. And let him try everything to escape. And he's probably almost escaping, but you just let go and you still sit there. Hello. And you try again. And again and again and again. And it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And then what happens is you end up with a highlight video of, of uh, Swedish kids' opponents just crying with like bruises on their <laughs> cheeks because it's literally just that, which is completely legal. It's just a CrossFit. I'm not, it's not the most proud thing I've ever done in my jiu-jitsu career. But. <laughs> It was an internal video. <laughs> so, the choke is when you wear them out. When they realize, God damn, I've been trying to escape eight times, and every time I get a cross face across my teeth. Right? It's not because you do the perfect choke the first time, because you can do that and they're going to explode to get out. But every time you let go and you try again, their will to live will drop a little bit. <laughs> yeah? You're like, fuck, okay, I can still get out. And you're like, ah, oh, try to get out, oh, my face, and then. They escape the choke, but I'm still there. And lower and lower. And at some point, they're just like, fuck it. And you just need a little choke, and they're going, okay, fuck it. I, I claim that because I have a lot of data. Right? We did this in many, many competitions. <clears throat> if you're super strong in that position, they never get out. You just have unlimited attempts. Right? And at some point, they will usually tap out. Yeah? So try that. Ap apologies on beforehand to your partner. And take your time. Let go and start over many times. Right? If you get eager and you think, it's perfect, I'm not going to let go. Then you try it and then they bump you off yeah? because they still had will to live. Let go, try again, across the face seven, eight times. And you're going to look. Your face matches your key soon. <laughs> okay, let's try. Be nice to each other. Yeah? Let's try. <laughs> All right, so how does it feel? Thanks. Horrible? Horrible. Wonderful. And in training, it's even worse, but I mean, in competition, when there's adrenaline, people are nervous, they can take much more pain, you know? Uh, so the key, again, to really make this work is not the actual choke. The key is that you stay in mouth and you keep trying again and again and again. And you might try the first two, three, four, five, six times and feel like I'm never gonna get the choke. But as long as you keep trying, you know, they get more and more tired, and you stay there. And if it's competition, you're usually winning if you stay in mouth. Right? And often you're going to get an advantage for every attempt. Sorry, Matt. Just the last one. <laughs> and there's a lot of, like, what ifs, you know. What if he puts his hand here or here or grabs and all that stuff? What I recommend is that you focus on getting really strong and sitting in this position, getting here and staying there, and then just setting up the choke and trying. And keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. And keep trying. So you can do uh, one more round where he's really hiding that side. Yeah, maybe even he's putting his left hand on his chin. So your left hand like that, really hiding it. Yeah? And again, there's a lot of things I could do and talk about like details, but the most important is that you stay where you are, you're ready to start over, and you just, no matter what he's doing, you just go on the face. Just hide it. I go on the fingers, on the eye. <laughs> and at some point, he just gets freaking tired of it. Yeah? <laughs> Fantastic uh, effort today. <laughs> uh, so it's the pointy part of the elbow just goes in the face all the time. Yeah, and your job is literally just to turn the head. Because one is choking, and the other one is just turning the head. That's where the power is in. Compared to trying to go two on the neck and like squeeze power the choke, right? Which will work if you're a judo national. But if you're me, it never works, right? Okay, so I apologize, but let's try one last time, one minute. Uh, just play a little bit and just stay where you are. Let go, build it up, build it up. A few attempts, let go, build it up again, until you finally, they give up on life, yeah? Okay, let's try. Just one more time. Switch on your own. Uh, 
Uh, so there's definitely many little like, what if this happens, what if that happens, and obviously you cannot just implement this joke in your game in just one hour of drilling it a little bit. Um, but the, the, the answers are all in just practicing, like really simple like that. One person is just bumping a little bit on the ground and you try to keep it. And once you feel, feel comfortable with that, they can up their level intensity of escaping and you try to keep the position, right? Just like slow progression. And then you start to do it with one hand, like that, almost like a rodeo thing, right? You're like this, just one hand. Yeah, and then slowly, slowly, and then you build it up. When you're comfortable with that, you start to tighten it and wait, tighten it and wait, tighten it and wait. Because the key to really be good at this is that you can stay in that mount position. And if you lose it, then you can get back to it. Right? And then just unlimited cross faces, and eventually they will tap. And the most important thing, remember, the first choke will never work, even if, if it's the perfect choke, the most perfect choke in the world, because they still have uh, confidence in escaping and will to live. Right? But the more you crank that face, uh, the easier it's going to be. And uh, I can maybe post some, uh, I have some competition highlight videos of, of my kids doing nothing but just, just get to mount and they just sit there for five minutes and maybe sometimes it takes 30 seconds, sometimes it takes five minutes, but they will always win in one way or the other. That was a great tactic. Unfortunately, now they're all like 25 and like super fit and they just like absolutely wreck me in mount with this joke. So it's coming back to me in a bad way. <laughs> I'm paying for that. I spent their entire childhood just letting them crush, crush faces, and now I'm the victim. So, okay, um, that was the class. I really recommend you take some time to drill it. Try it also in sparring. It's obviously a little bit difficult now to take it to sparring because they're not going to give you progressive escape resistance, but everybody's going to try to actually escape. But maybe you can pull it off. Start with some little opponents, beginners, and then slowly build it up. <laughs> no, that's how you have to practice everything. Everything I practice, I start with. Kids, then white belts, <laughs> then blue belts, you know, slowly build it up. If I start on the black belts, I'm never going to get any success experience out of it. Yeah? So, yeah, I'm not saying you should go out and choke kids with this, but uh, maybe. Maybe, yeah, I may, may. Sure, I'm not, not saying it. <laughs> Show up for the kids' class Monday. <laughs> hey, kids. <laughs> Something to practice. Um, there's also an element of difference in size. If you're like, either much longer or shorter than your opponent. This is more difficult because the position changes, but you figure that out on your own, right? Okay, I apologize again, especially to Matt for this, but also to everyone else who took a lot of elbows to the face today. Uh, hope you enjoyed the class. I think it's open time now. Cool, thanks for coming.